ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونظيرا بين يدي الساءة من يتع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فلا يذر إلا نفسه أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال عز وجل يسبح لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض الملك القدوس العزيز الحكيم هو الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين رب شرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يبكه قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وزبنا الطباء وأرنا الباطل باطلا وزبنا اجتنابا اللهم ألهمني رشدي وعزني من شر نفسي Last week I had talked about Sutta Saf and the main theme of Sutta Saf was to support the cause of Islam and that is the currency of your Iman, the currency of your conviction, the belief that you have is how much are you willing to support Islam, how much are you willing to give for Islam. وَجَاهِدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنْفُسِكُمْ Struggle in the path of Allah with yourselves and with your wealth. This is best for you if you did but know. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and if you do struggle for Islam, then two things will be given. Number one is you'll get Jannah. And number two, And the other thing you love, what do you love? You love victory in this life. So this was the basic uh, summary of what I had talked about last week. This was one side of the Prophet's mission. By the way, this has come side by side in many surahs. You will find that the relationship that is there between Sutul Saf and Sutul Jumu'ah is also the same relationship between Sutul Mudassir and Sutul Muzammir. Sutul Mudassir. First, Sutul Muzammil has the same theme as Sutul Jumu'ah. Sutul Mudassir has the same theme as Sutul Saf. Over there in Sutul Saf, as we have already discussed, the main focus is how much are you willing to exert yourself for the cause of Islam. In Sutul Mudassir, by the way, Sutul Mudassir is the surah by which the Prophet وسلم, according to many scholars, became the Rasul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He became Nafi by Ikra. Ikra, this ladhi khalaq. He became Nabi by Ikra, he became Rasul by Mudassir. This is where he was told to stand up and go out. As you know, when Ikra was revealed, there was a period where the Prophet was just to himself. He was not preaching. But his, his education and preaching to the others started with Sutul Mudassir. And what is the theme of Sutul Mudassir? Ya yuhal muzammir. Ya yuhal mudassir. Oh, you who's wrapped up in the blanket. Qum fa'anzir. Stand up and warn the people. And make Allah Akbar. Make Allah most supreme. Meaning that the truth should become manifest. The truth should become clear. And Sutul Muzammil, on the other side of the Prophet's life. So, you know, as there was two sides to the Prophet. In one, he was facing Allah as an Abd, as a servant of Allah. And as Rasul, he was facing towards the people. <laughs> So Mudassir is about him, what he has to do with the people. Muzammil, Ya Yuhal Muzammil, Qumil Layla Illa. You see, you see how these surahs sometimes when they're twins, they have similar wordings. Ya Yuhal Mudassir, Qum Fa'anzir. Ya Yuhal Muzammil, Qumil Layla Illa Qalila. Nisfahu awin kusminhu qalila. Awzid alayhi wa rattil al-Qur'an at-Tartila. Just keep reading this Qur'an at night. The main theme of Sutta Saf, Wa Rabba Kafakabbir. The main theme of Sutul Jumu'ah, as you'll see, and why it's called Jumu'ah, this also will become clear. Because the main function of Yawmul Jumu'ah on the day of Jumu'ah is the, because the Prophet made this institution a very powerful, think of this. There's no other people in the world that do this where they gather together for half an hour 
right, all over the world. Muslims gathering from all over the world to take a half an hour lesson, a half an hour reminder about their deen, the way the Muslims do it. But anyway, uh, there are other similar groups you can say, but I'm not going to go into the differences. But here the Prophet, I'm only mentioning, the Prophet instituted a system of education. An education of what? Education of Qur'an, as will become clear in the surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with the Jum'ah by mentioning four of his attributes. يُسَبِّهُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ الْمَلِكِ الْقُدُّوسِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ Four of his attributes. In the next ayah, the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions four of the attributes of the Prophet in correspondence to the four of his attributes. So, يُسَبِّهُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Everything in the heavens and the earth is doing tasbih of Allah. Al-Malik, he's the king. Al-Quddus, he's holy, he's pure. Al-Aziz, authority belongs to him. Al-Hakim, his authority is full of wisdom. He's all wise, Al-Hakim. He's absolutely wise. Four attributes. <coughs> then when talking about the Prophet, now this Allah who has these four attributes, he sent a messenger who has four functions. One is, help the cause of Allah. But then the question is, the same question that was answered in the Saf. Okay, I want to help the cause of Allah, what do I do? Then Allah answers that, وَيَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُونُوا أَنصَارُ اللَّهِ كُونُوا أَنصَارُ اللَّهِ O you people who believe, become helpers of Allah. كَمَا قَالَ عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمْ Like Isa said to his disciples, مَنْ أَنصَارِ إِلَى اللَّهِ Who will help me in the cause of Allah? قَالَ الْحَوَارِيُونَ نَحْنُوا أَنصَارُ اللَّهِ The disciples, they said, we will help the cause of Allah. So the same way somebody wants to help the cause of Allah, he stands up. He says, look, I'm going to do this for Islam. I'm going to do something for Islam. Who is going to help me? And then people respond to him, and people join hands with him, and they say, we're going to help the cause of Islam. This is how the process has been throughout history. Somebody stands up, somebody comes up with an idea, somebody comes up with a project, and people join hands with him, and they move forward with that project. And so the same thing the prophets did, they said, man ansari ila Allah, who will help me in the cause of Allah? And the people that join hands with him. Now when you have people around you, when you have people around you, disciples around you, companions around you, you have to train them, you have to educate them, you have to grow them, you have to nurture them, you have to train them, you have to make them into a disciplined group, you have to organize them, you have to create a movement out of them. How will that happen? So for that, the drama was revealed. So... Allah says, يُسَبِّهُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ الْمَلِكِ الْقُدُّوسِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ Next ayah, هُوَ الَّذِي بَعْسَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who raised a messenger amongst the unlettered people. Amongst them, he was amongst their own people. What does he do? Four things. Number one, يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ He recites to them his ayat. Why? Because Al-Malik, the king, what does a king do? A king sends his messenger, and the messenger goes to the people, and he brings out the proclamations of the king, and he reads, this is what your king is telling you to do. يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ هُوَ الَّذِي بَعْسَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ The words the Qur'an uses are the same words that the Qur'an is, that was in Urf, in known in that time, were ma'roof at that time, to be between the king and the messenger. The messenger is sent by the king. So, the prophet is a messenger from Allah, and he's reading Allah's ayat, he's reading Allah's proclamations. First thing. First name of Allah, Al-Malik. Second name of Allah, Al-Quddus, pure. يَطْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ Zakkihim, he purifies them. Second name of Allah, Al-Quddus, the pure, the absolute pure, Al-Quddus. We say in Urdu, Muqaddas, Muqaddas, the pure, beyond bounds, something beyond bounds, something pure. So he is the one who purifies them. هُوَ الَّذِي بَعْسَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ يَطْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ Then he takes this Qur'an, he recites this Qur'an. With this Qur'an, then he purifies the people. And the second name of Allah is Al-Quddus. The third name of Allah, Al-Aziz. Al-Aziz means, like I mentioned, 
is also mentioned in Quran in uh, the story of Aziz al Misr. The Aziz, the, the minister that was there in the story of uh, Yusuf, is also called Aziz. Aziz means the one who has authority. Al Aziz means the one who has power and authority to legislate law. Legislate law. That's what a minister does. So, and he teaches them the book, the kitab. The book here, book doesn't mean book in this ayah. Book here means law. The word kitab is used in Quran for law. Kutiba alaykum al-siyam. Kutiba alaykum al-kitab. Inna salata kana ala al-mu'minina kitab al mawkuta Salah is, is put in written times. So the word kitab is in its specific sense means law, legislation. So, هُوَ الَّذِي بَعَثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِمْ The first, Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, يُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابِ Over there is Al-Aziz. And then the last thing the Prophet does, because teaching you the law is not enough. The laws are subservient to the wisdom of the law. The laws, they are in place for a reason. So, هُوَ الَّذِي بَعْصَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ And he teaches you the wisdom. And then last name of Allah here is الْمَلِكِ الْقُدُّوسِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ Hikmah, Allah is absolute wise. And the source, and what is the Prophet doing? His fourth function is teaching wisdom. Now, according to some of the narrations, wisdom also includes the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, but is not limited to that because the Qur'an itself says, Yasin wal Qur'an al Hakim, and Yasin, and by the wise, Qur'an, meaning Qur'an full of wisdom. So there are four functions of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, to <coughs> promote this teaching of the Qur'an, the wisdom of the Qur'an, the law of the Qur'an, seeing the miracles of the Qur'an, how will that happen? For that, the Prophet ﷺ instituted the day of Jum'ah. That will come towards the end of the surah, surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu, idha nudhiya lis-salati min yawm al-jum'ati, fas'aw ila dhikrillah. Wadharu al-bayi. Oh, you people who believe, when you hear the adhan, when you hear the call for Jum'ah, then hurry up to the day of Jum'ah. Because, why? Because this is the day where you will be taught the book, that the Prophet was sent with, you will be purified with this book, you will be taught wisdom with this book, you will be taught the laws of do's and don'ts with this book. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُسَبِّهُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Please move forward everyone. tells us, commit to the cause and get organized. Even in the beginning of the surah, where Allah says, Ya inna Allah yuhibbu alladhina yuqatiluna fi sabilihi saffan ka'annahum bunyanum marsus. Allah loves those people who struggle in His cause as if they are a solid wall. Meaning they have become, you know, when a community like the companions of the Prophet, they had become like a solid wall. Singularity of thought, singularity of mind, singleness of mission. They were concerned with nothing but the mission that was before them, that was preserving and promoting the cause of Islam. Now, how will you create this group? How will you prepare these people? Now, that answer, like I said, is in Surah Jum'ah. So Allah starts with, يُسَبِّهُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ الْمَلِكِ الْقُدُّوسِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ Four of Allah's attributes, four of the functions of the Prophet. هُوَ الَّذِي بَعْصَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالِ مُبِينَ Indeed, before this, before they had the Prophet, before they had the Book of Allah, they were lost. They didn't know what their life was about. They were just no different than any animal that grazes in the fields. Their life was just to eat and 
enjoy themselves and finally come to an end. وَإِن كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ Now, Ummiyin means the Arabs. So the first group of people that responded to the call of the Prophet was the Ummiyin, the Arabs. Here in this ayah, there's also a prophecy that the Prophet is being told and the companions are being told that not only the Arabs will respond to the call of Islam through this process of teaching of the Qur'an, but the non-Arabs will also join them in this cause. وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ And there are others that have not yet joined their cause. And in the, if you take up the tafsir of Imam Ibn Kathir, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, when he was asked, who are these people? وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ He put his hand on Salman bin Farsi, and he said, it will be his people, his people will be such, that if there is knowledge, even in the stars, they will be able to get it. وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِيهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ This is the fadl of Allah that He gave the Arabs, the, the place that He gave them, the centralness in the ummah. ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِيهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ ذُو الْفَضْلِ الْعَظِيمُ Then now here is the real, okay, so this is understood. The Qur'an has four functions. The Prophet came to spread these four functions, but now the question to ask is this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then asks, He says, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُوا الطَّوْرَاتِ Look at the people before you. You have been given the Qur'an. There were people before you, they were given tawrat. Please move forward. The people before you, they were given the responsibility to carry tawrat. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُوا الطَّوْرَاتِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْمِلُوهَا And then they didn't carry their responsibility of carrying the tawrat, the book of Allah. And Allah is saying, what is the, their example for Allah? When they were given this Qur'an and they betrayed that book of Allah, as the Prophet is told in Qur'an, that the Prophet will say on the Day of Judgment, the Prophet will say about us, Oh Allah, my people, they have thrown, they did hijrah from Qur'an. You know hijrah? They left the Qur'an. This is a statement the Prophet will make on the Day of Judgment that's mentioned in the Qur'an. In, in the Qur'an So anyway, please move forward. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look, the example of the people before you, you have been given a great fadl, a great, uh, something, you were given something you didn't deserve. Fadl means, by the way, the specific meaning of fadl is something to be given something you don't deserve. So, ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ this is the fadl of Allah that He's made you Muslims. He's given you the Qur'an. You are in the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad None of this you deserved, but Allah gave it to you. The example of the people before you that were given Torah, ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْمِلُوهَا Then they didn't carry their responsibility. Their example is like a donkey. يَحْمِلُ أَسْفَاغَ Like the donkey that carries purified pages. يَحْمِلُ أَسْفَارَ Just a donkey that you put, meaning they're still animals. They were not able to take this book and become human beings with this book. They were no different than وَإِن كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالِ مُبِينَ That before when they were lost, they didn't have any prophet, they didn't have any book. They were living lives as no different than animals. Eat, drink, be merry, and then die. Just like animals that are grazing. But like the Qur'an says, هُمْ كَالْعَنْعَامِ بَلْ هُمْ أَضَلْ They're like cattle, but even worse than that. Because if you're if you're not if you don't have spirituality as a human being, then you're just a higher evolved animal. That's all. You're not really what Allah intended you to be. And so Allah says, Then Allah says, This is the worst example of the people that have made a lie out of Allah's ayat out of his signs. This, if you take this in its full seriousness, we would read this ayah today in its full understanding. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُوا الْقُرْآنِ The example of the people that were given the responsibility of Qur'an today. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُوا الْقُرْآنِ كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ يَحْمِلُ أَسْفَارًا Their example is like a donkey that they just have pages on top of the donkey. We're also, we're not concerned with Qur'an or the mission of the Prophet or what is the truth or what are the higher aspects of life. We also want to eat, drink, be merry, have fun, have entertainment and enjoy and be cynical and finally die. 
and I'm not saying that you know this this is just a something that it's a soul searching question more than a judgment of any sort uh, on us. So Allah says, so Allah is saying, look, I gave you the book and I gave you the prophet, but don't become like those people. Don't become like the former Muslim Ummah, the form meaning the people of Musa alayhi salatu. Don't become like that. Allah doesn't want to guide wrongdoing people. You have the book of Allah and you're still doing wrong? Like, that's something very terrible. Then, what is the real problem? What is, why was Bani Israel not able to accept the book of Allah and the responsibility regarding the book of Allah that is mentioned next at least one aspect of it please come forward everybody please move forward <coughs> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says talking to the talking to the Jewish community but in fact the address is indirectly to, direct, indirectly to the Muslims. Allah then says, why did they not take the, their book, Torah, seriously? And the answer is given, Ya ayyuhal ladhina haadu in za'amtum annakum awliya Allahi min dunin nasi fatamanna ul mawta in kuntum salatim. Oh, you people who are claiming to be Jews, if you really think you are friends of Allah, then you should seek death. I'm not going to go into the explanation of this, why this is said. I only want to mention here, the problem was denial of death. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا يَتَمَنَّوْنَهُ أَبَدًا بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ And you will never wish for death. Because of what you have sent forward. Because of what you know what you have done. And Allah knows fully who are the unjust people. The reason why... And let me just finish this because then time is running out. Say that death, that which you are running away from, that death will definitely meet you. Then you will be returned to the one who knows all that's hidden and apparent, and he will tell you everything that you had done, been doing. You were given the book of Allah, but because you were in denial that this life ends, that death comes. So we have to ask ourselves as Muslims, and really one of the main transformations in any human being's life especially amongst Muslims, is when we realize and acknowledge to ourselves that, yeah, no matter what I do, I'm going to die one day. No matter what I do, everything comes to an end for me. No matter what I do, people are going to put me in my grave and walk away, and a few months from now, and a few months after that, no one's going to know who I was. I can die any time. I can die in a car accident. I can die in an airplane ride. I can... People die from diseases. I mean, the point is, this life is so temporary. And until you don't, because death makes us confront our ultimate reality. Death makes us confront our ultimate weaknesses. Death makes us confront, why am I doing all the things that I'm doing in life? What's the purpose of all this? Please move forward. Uh, people in the middle over here, please move forward. <coughs> So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying the reason the Jews, the former Muslim Ummah, they were not able to hold on to the responsibility of having Tawrat was because of their denial of death, was one of the major reasons. And you know, we don't realize this, but in psychology there's been a lot of studies about how death affects us on even day-to-day -day life, on our life, because all of us, all of us, we, we are running away from death in the sense that, you know, we do things to distract us from the ultimate reality. That's why, by the way, internally, and I've mentioned this a few times, but it's very important to think about, why does everyone feel like a loser inside? Really, if, if you ask, if you look at yourself, everybody feels inadequate. 
Everybody feels I'm not good enough. I have to fake it on the outside. We call it a persona in psychology. I have to put a persona, but no one knows what, how, how, how little I feel inside. We all feel inadequate inside. You know why? Because it's the inability of that person to deal with the reality of death. When you deal with de death, that inadequacy, that inadequacy, the feeling of inadequacy tends to go away. So we're all losers, as the Qur'an says, when also in the insan al So every human being is a loser because until you don't confront your ultimate reality is, your ultimate reality is death. And until you don't face that, you can live in the fantasy of this life and run after this life. But until you don't face that, you won't be able to face the fact that you have to hold up the struggle of Islam and hold up the Qur'an and live the Qur'an and promote the Qur'an and teach the Qur'an. It won't happen. Because until death is not there in front of your face as a reality, if you're not thinking about death every single day, then you'll be lost in the delusions of life. If you're not thinking about death, the reality of death, if it doesn't come to your mind at least once a day, if not every hour, if not in every prayer, the, 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 the frailty of human life, if it doesn't come to your mind at least a few times a day, then you are in delusion. Really, because it's delusional not to think about the most fearful thing. And again, I, I don't have time now because time is ending. So I just want to end with, after this, Allah mentions the introduction, Allah sent His messenger. Those people, uh, th this mission will be carried forward at any cost. And then Allah says, don't become like the people before you. They didn't carry the Torah and their problem was denial of death. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after that says, Now, in order for you to hold on to the Qur'an, and you to hold on to the teachings of Qur'an, uh, let me just uh, quickly do the second khutbah, uh, uh, quickly, and then we will have to wrap up now. So now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in order to institutionalize this, we have made the day of Jum'ah. So Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu idha nudhiya lis-salati min yawm al-Jum'ah, fas awillah dhikrillah. Then, on the day of judgment, uh, sorry, when you are called for the Jum'ah, then hurry up to the dhikr of Allah. Dhikr of Allah, dhikr, ad-dhikr, in Qur'an, Specifically, al-dhikr is Qur'an. نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا ذِكْرَ وَإِنَّ لَهُ لَحَافِذُونَ We've sent down al-dhikr, the reminder. Reminder for what? The hidden truths that are already within you. The, the fitrah, the human fitrah, the, all the truths it carries, one of them is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But again, I don't have time today. So let's uh, finish with dua quickly. And, uh, and then we will uh, pray. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم تجعل القرآن ربيع قلوبنا